Welcome back. I'm Karen Pugliese. At issue today, a First Nations community struggles for survival. The Lubicon Cree live in the middle of the Alberta oil fields. The province's share of this oil and gas wealth has been more than $14 billion. Yet the Lubicon people are amongst the poorest of Canadians and live without basic services like running water. Amnesty International has been documenting living conditions in the community. Here's what one youth living in the community had to say in Amnesty's film, Our Land, My People. Like the term blackmail really does. It, it just defines everything. It's because we don't just, okay, um, we, don't, we won't back down. Because we won't back down, there's certain things that are taken from us. The services that we need are taken from us. The housing, the money we need for housing is taken from us. And it's just like a trade-off. And it's, it's really sad because then like, we're being punished because we stand up for what we believe in. International human rights agencies like Amnesty International say this is not just a land claim. They say it's a human rights issue. Joining us to tell us more from Amnesty International is Craig Benjamin. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Karen. So Craig, we just saw a clip from a young mm -hmm. woman who actually called the, what's going on in the community. Uh, the context was the government taking services away from the community. Um, she called it blackmail. Mm -hmm. Would Amnesty go that far? Well, the thing is that something like access to clean drinking water is a fundamental human right. This is an obligation of the government it's an, and it's a right that most of us get to take for granted. In the Lubicon case, they've been put into a situation where other rights, the right to their land, the right to practice their culture, have been denied. In order, and the government has said if you want to, to settle uh, this, this long-standing claim, then you have to give other things up. Uh, you have to be willing to surrender aspects of your, your inherent Aboriginal rights. And in the meantime, other rights are not being fulfilled because this, this dispute is, is unresolved. So you have the situation where the government, instead of living up to its responsibility, is actively denying these rights to the community. So yes, we would condemn it in the strongest terms.